friends, welcome back to my kitchen where everything is scratch made and home preserved. I'm Jenny, if you're new here, welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Today we are going to be doing some canning. I'm doing a lot of canning today. So I am going to be canning up some vegetable beef soup today. I had a couple small chunks of sirloin roast floating around my freezer, so I thought I'd better get them cut up and canned up. Plus, I, I tell you later in the video this, but I wanted vegetable beef soup the other day and I didn't, I ran out of home canned soup, so I ate a can of Progresso and it wasn't very good. So anyway, I am canning up my own so that I can have my own whatever I want. And I'm doing mine in quarts. You can do them in pints if you prefer. If you're a smaller household, you can even do them in half pints. Processing time is going to come out of this book here, the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning. Always reference this book before canning, always. Now in here for soup, it tells you 65 minutes. I'm gonna can mine for 90. I, I don't, I think the reasoning for 65 minute soups is that the broth is thin and there's enough room for the heat and pressure to penetrate, deeming it safe, but because it's me, I'm still going to do mine for 90 minutes. So feel free to read that and decide for yourself, 65 minutes or 90 minutes. Um, if I were doing pints, I would still process them for 75 minutes. But again, read that book and read the whole section. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So pull a chair up to my counter and join me as I can up my vegetable beef soup. I'm going to can it up plain so that I have options when I heat it up. Okay. So this is the easiest possible way to make a soup or a stew. Today we're doing soup. If you prefer to do a bigger cut stew, you can totally do that. In here I have about six to seven pounds of beef. And I cut these in half inch cubes. I have one white onion and I have diced that. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Three carrots diced and three celery diced. Go ahead and put those in. You can cut this stuff a day ahead of time and then um, can the next day. Prep a day, can a day. It's my favorite method. I'm going to drain my potatoes because I had did the same thing with my potatoes. I prepped them and soaked them in citrus water. And I'm going to, I probably won't use all of them, but I had to get rid of the five pound bag I had. So I'm going to go ahead and put about two cups of diced potatoes in here. And then I'm going to mix my seasonings right into this. We are going to raw pack this soup. It's easy and it's going to be super delicious. Okay. One teaspoon of garlic. One table, and that was garlic powder. One tablespoon of onion powder. A half a teaspoon of black pepper. Whoa a teaspoon of kosher salt. This is three cloves of chopped garlic, fresh. You don't want it to be garlicky, a garlicky soup, but garlic lends flavor. It's an allium. Lends a lot of flavor. We want to stir this veg together. And we have two more flavorings that we're going to be doing. I'm going to use water and powdered beef bouillon. You can use beef broth, your beef stock, your home canned, whatever you want to do. I look at it this way. When I'm canning something up, I don't want to open up my already home canned product to recan it in something else. I will re I reserve my beef broth for when I'm making a fresh soup on the stove. I actually got to make more. Found some more beef bones in the freezer, so if you want to put any other vegetable in your vegetable beef soup, Feel free. You want peas, you want carrots, green beans, whatever you like. Adding additional veggies to your soup is not going to change your canning time. 
I have my jars washed and ready to go. I chunked my meat and vegetables all about a half inch. Because I'm making beef soup, not stew. If you would prefer a chunkier stew, just chunk your vegetables and meat bigger. You can do your meat about an inch, inch and a half, and same thing with your potatoes and carrots. Making soups is very versatile. You can you can pretty much make any soup you want to make. We will be canning according to of course the complete guide to home canning and in here it tells you this very same method for making soup. You're going to do half solid, half broth and anything goes other than fish because fish cans for longer a fish product so what i'm going for here is half solids and then i'll put broth in so the other day and i'm in total even though it's still hot i'm in total soup mode the other day i wanted soup so bad and i went out to my pantry and realized i didn't have any vegetable soup canned up so i ended up eating a progresso vegetable beef soup and it wasn't very good. So I thought I have got to get some soup canned up that I can just eat for lunch because I like soups and salads and sandwiches mm. for lunch when I'm home alone. Not that it's dinner food, not that my husband will appreciate that much soup. <laughs> he likes it. I mean this one has meat so he'll eat this one. But on the other counter there, same day, I'm filming a Croctober video for you, and that one is a vegetarian soup. So when you heat this up, now I like my soup thin and brothy, but if you want to thicken it, you can thicken it up. Some of them, when I heat them up, I may choose to add barley to them. You can't can barley, but you can certainly add it when you heat it up to make a beef and barley soup, a beef and barley vegetable soup. I do love that. I always keep barley on hand, and with a few of these I may do that, or sometimes I will thicken it a little bit and then add dumplings. So it's pretty versatile. I'm not adding tomato to this canned product, but if you wanted to add tomato you certainly could. If you want to put a can of diced tomatoes in this mix, you can do that. Oh, also, I meant to use actually veg all. I had frozen veg all, which I was going to use for this, but then I just realized I had a bunch of fresh vegetable, which I need, of course, to use up first because no one wants their fresh vegetables to go bad. But you can use frozen veg all for this. Excellent hack. Just do a bag of veg all and your six, six to seven pounds of beef. Okay, stage number two of seasoning with my bouillon. Again, you don't have to use bouillon, use broth if you want. But I'm going to put one teaspoon of bouillon into each jar because each jar is going to hold about two cups of water with this. Okay, and we've already put the rest of our seasonings in other than bay leaf. I'm going to do a half a bay leaf per jar. I just I know I, I use bay leaf and no it does not get too strong sitting in the jars. I like the flavor. I, I think to t soup tastes flat without it, beef soup, and I will always can with it. So I automatically know when I open this up and dump it into a pan to heat it up, I get the bay leaf out first. It's standard for me. because it will have given all of its flavor already. This is kind of a really nice soup too. You can prep a day, can a day again, but also your canner stays cold until you, okay, so it's a little more, it's about two and a half cups of water per jar. We're gonna leave a one inch head space. Also, when you heat this up, I'm always gonna add a couple dashes of Worcestershire to it when heating it up. I don't before when I'm canning, but I do when I'm heating it up. 
Raw pack canning is also nice because it's a little bit more relaxed. We're going to leave one inch headspace here, folks. It's a little more relaxed. I'm, you know, things aren't cooling down. I'm not racing to try to get everything together before they cool down too much. I have a, a water purifier and it needs a new filter and it goes really slow and it needs a new filter. But I'm too cheap to use up a bunch of bottled water on this. And of course I'm using my pure lids because they're my favorite. I did not soak these in hot water. You don't need to anymore. And when you're pressure canning, you really don't need to. Okay, so fingertip tight. I'm going to go ahead and put them in my canner cold. Cold jar, cold canner. Keep, just remember that. me. I thought I double-lidded double something. I did not. <laughs> Has happened before though. Okay, I'm filling up my last pitcher of water. You can also do these in if you're doing like solo lunches for one. I have I do a lot of that. Okay, I've got it all buckled down and I am going to go ahead and process those guys 90 minutes instead of this, the recommended 65. It just makes me feel better because it's meat. But read your book and make your own decisions from there. Our soup is done. <coughs> Coming out of the canner, they're all sealed already. And they smell delicious. I am super excited to have these on the shelf and ready when I want them. And there they are. Still moving a little bit of air, but completely sealed already and I like I said I used pure lids and I've got some pure jars and I've got also a couple ball and curd in there okay that's all there is to canning vegetable beef soup I did a super easy raw pack method that's kind of nice because you can prep a day get it all in the refrigerator and the next day get it into the jars and get it into your canner it is a an excellent way to do it because it's not there's no time constraints. You don't have to hurry up because you're afraid things are cool. Your jars are cooling down when you fill them. So, an excellent way to prepare soup. You can also heat the heat everything, put everything in a pan and heat it up, and fill your jars hot. You'd want to then bring everything, the meat, the vegetables, your seasonings, bring them up to a boil, and put a lid on it, turn it down, and let it just simmer for 10 minutes and then fill your jars if you wanted to go that route. Anyway, this is nice and easy. Just know it does take longer for your canner to heat up when you start out cold and there is a little bit more chance of siphoning with thin broth and soup in a, starting in a cold canner. Just an FYI. No big deal. Anyway friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like videos like these, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog at JennyGoff.com for all of my recipes, including this one. 
I will put the printable recipe card in the description box below for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.